Hey friends, did you know consistently practicing consistency will make you a consistently better trader? Which means you'll consistently put more money in your pocket. Isn't that cool? Well, guess what we're talking about today in today's session of Trade Your Way to Freedom? Consistency. I'll share five ways you can be more consistent as a trader. They're simple and easy steps, but if you don't take them, you're not going to be consistent. So what do you want? Anyway, looking forward to today. Got two great stocks. Let's jump into today's session right now. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, Dennis Wilburn, the Autopilot Trader. I just want to welcome you to today's session of Trade Your Way to Freedom. The markets uh, appear to be uh, waiting until they see what the Fed's going to do next week. Uh, Anil, welcome. Yeah, good to be here. Thank you. And... Uh, as I was reviewing the IBD 50, or not the IBD 50, but the IBD newspaper this morning, the major headlines were fresh fears drive the market. And there are a lot of fresh fears out there. We've had some uh, questionable issues going on with the bank. I was sharing with Anil earlier, and if you were listening on in, um, the thing that concerns me about the banks is the things they're not telling us about the banks. In other words, what else is going on behind the scenes? I don't know. So bank failures is, is an issue. Um, is there some governmental manipulation going on there to uh, uh, just, it's really kind of interesting. Uh, the government wants to get out this, the, their own digital money or whatever it's, it's called. And uh, so that would be competing with crypto. And so could they be trying to, Hamper crypto, although some of the cryptos uh, stocks are up nicely today, and then uh, and then First Republic Bank, where uh, a lot of the other banks chipped in to bring those up, and uh, and Credit Suisse uh, having issues, and so it's just one heck of a heck of a week to be walking. You know, uh, it's it kind of reminds me of that. Uh, uh, Anil, do you remember that that movie called Airport? Yes. Uh, what's his name? Lloyd Bridges was in that one of the last movies that he did. And he was always going around. And he goes, oh, I picked a terrible week to quit smoking or I picked a terrible week to quit drinking. And this is kind of the, the kind of the, you know, I picked a terrible week to 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 go along the market, you know, whatever, you know, pick pick an, a topic. So, hey, enough of that. Let's jump into today's session because uh, we could talk forever about what's going on. This. In today's session, we're going to take an overview up. Market movers uh, uh, next week, trading tips, index, and our stock picks. The big market movers that are coming out for next week, of course, is the Fed. Um, the question on the table, and and I'll ask this of everybody, and you just please type into your uh, to the chat box. Do you think that the market has already priced in a 0.5 uh, 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 percent rate hike? this coming Wednesday. And if you're over on the YouTube channel, please let me know who's over there. Thanks for joining over there. And uh, you can respond over there too. Do you think that the market has already priced in a 0.5% uh, rate hike? I think Gary says yes. And over on the YouTube channel, we're still waiting for a comment over there. How about Mark says no, 0.25, okay. Based on that, and and Anil, what, are you at a 0.25 or a 0.5? I think it's 0.25. If they do it 0.5, probably market will go down, I think. Market yeah. I'm not going to like it. Okay. Hey, Dennis, uh, over there. And so, yes. And so anybody else on uh, uh, Jimmy, Ashraf, Paula, anybody? Yeah, the uh, yeah, it could be a real toss-up. It would be, be something worth watching. Uh, Muhammad's in for a 0.25. So, yeah, if they, I think if they go 0.5 and so... Hey, Jim, uh, um, Jerry, nice to see you over there. 0.25, okay. So let's go ahead and jump into today's session and take a look at what the heck is, in fact, going on. Always a reminder that there is a disclaimer, uh, and it's basically to say, hey, trading can be risky, and uh, all the materials we prevent are for, pre provide are for training purposes only. Here's where we're sitting. Um Tracking really, really well. Thank God the month of March is not over with yet. 
but uh, but it kind of went flat to slightly down to start off the month of March. And uh, you know, I want to do full disclaimer that you know we nobody has a P and L line that goes straight up the line or straight down the line. It will zig and zag, and that's one of the sometimes that's one of the chart most challenging things for traders to get used to. Here's where we were last week, and here's where we are today. As you can see, uh, what some of the things that have happened since last week. As you can see. The Russell was still in positive territory for the year, and the Dow was the only uh, of the indexes that was down. And now we see that the Dow is down more. The S&P is just up a little. NASDAQ still leading the charge. And then the Russell is basically uh, into the uh, red territory. Uh, as it appears that the small caps are really concerned about what's going on with the interest rates. Jump over to our charts and take a look at what specifically is going on. Remember that the Fed meets next week. And so what we may see going into next week is something that is basically just a uh, hurry up and wait I would not be surprised to see next week's price action operate between this high and this low right here on the S&P for the whole week up until Wednesday. And as soon as the Fed reports out, then we're going to find out whether we know go this way or we break out and go this way. But even if we break out, be aware of where we'll probably run into resistance right there at the 406 and also up at the downtrend line right there. So that's what I'm looking at with that. On the uh, longer term weekly chart, as you can see, the momentum is still facing down. However, on the, on the weekly chart, we do have a nice bullish, what's it called a bullish harami almost a, a hammer type of a, a reversal signal on the weekly chart. That tells us a couple of things to be aware of. The top of the candle is a hard level of uh, uh, resistance. The lower is a hard level of support. And so somewhere around the middle could be where it finds equilibrium will make it want to bounce from there. At least we'll see what tra transpires right there. But it would not be surprising to just see this fluctuate uh, on the S&P in those areas. The I'm going to jump to the Russell and then come back to the, uh, uh, to the NASDAQ. As you can see, the Russell has pushed all the way back down, is just about ready to potentially take out the lows for the uh, uh, that were set back in uh, December of last year uh, before it went on this really nice rally. So it has made a full round trip. And so anybody who jumped in over here who didn't take profits here is basically down back to zero profits. Now, is it going to bounce? Is it going to hold here? Right now, we don't know. But looking and seeing where these long tails are over here, that could give us an indication that's where we could bounce from there. If this level fails at the 170 level, 170, 40, 14, then look out for getting down to these lows could have a complete round trip. And that would take us back to the October lows. And uh, I think if we get back to the October lows, that could be really shaky for a lot of people. Be aware that the Russell has dropped about 14, almost a little bit over 14% from its high. So that's it for the Russell. Again, it its, it's uh, momentum is down in the lower levels, looking like it should want to shift. But right now, I have no bullish daily reversal signals on the Russell. Now, the, the NASDAQ, slightly different picture. Uh, again, not slightly, a huge different picture in that over here, if you will, this is the lows from the beginning of the year. On the NASDAQ, didn't even come close to trying to go down there and threaten those. Came down to the 200-day moving average, dropped below it, fake out, brought, popped back up, and now it's taken back off. It is hitting a level of resistance right where we would think it would 
at approximately the downtrend line. This could be, this could be uh, if it closes up where it's at, a bearish Harami, which is one of the, just remember, that is one of the weaker uh, candlestick uh, uh, signals. Uh, but it could still say, hey, I want to stop, reverse here, pull back into the moving averages. Would not be surprising. But as you can see, we've got the tail of three different indexes. Right now, the NASDAQ is holding up better than the other uh, the other two tracking indexes that we follow. Uh, right now, I'm on the sideline waiting for uh, the setups, waiting for the Fed. And um, I'm waiting, you know, just for uh, more reports. Are we going to continue to get body blows because of inflation, because of interest rates that it was going to knock the, the market down? If the NASDAQ joins to the downside, the S&P and the, the Russell, then watch for it to slide down here, take out this low, then watch out for these lows from the beginning of the year. Anil, that's all I've got on the indexes. Any, any comments or? No, the comment I have is on my triple screen chart, the weekly uptrend signal that I got late 22, early 23 are still on. Okay. On S&P 500, NASDAQ, and Russell. But Dow has given up. It has gone the other way. Okay. The others, uh, as you said, NASDAQ is holding up the strongest on my system. So, hey, do you ever roll in, uh, this is just somebody, do you ever roll in the uh, information uh, for the uh, uh, transportations? Because there used to be a tie between the transportation and the Dow. If, if, if transportations were falling from the skies, then the Dow was probably, and the rest of the market was going to follow. No, that's a good point. But no, I have not. Uh, okay. The chart, I will. Okay. Just, yeah, just a thought. And so, yeah. but, that, but that's very interesting is that the longer term charts still showing that we're in a, in a buy position on your triple screen. Here's my trading tip for the day. I, uh, I wanted to uh, clarify, you know, simplify and clarify for greater consistency. Trading consistency is one of the major issues the majority of traders have. They win, and part of it has to do with these five issues. One, if you want to have greater consistency, here's the simple and clear steps to take. One, develop a trading plan. And uh, there are so many trading plans out there, and they all follow kind of a similar pattern. If you're interested in getting mine, I you know I give away my my uh, uh, rules on one page. And if you're interested in getting that, just drop me an email, and let me know. But having a plan can help you stay focused and disciplined in your trading. Uh, the lack of consistently leads to lack of focus and undisciplined and fearful trading. Identify high probability trading signals. Very, very important to do and learn how to do that. Focus on identifying high probability signals that have a higher chance of success. And we'll talk a little bit about that here shortly. Number three, implement a trading routine. Uh, now that trading routine basically is more or less doing the same thing day after day after day after day. You, you'd start looking at the market at the same time in the morning. You know what you're looking for. And by repeating that and solidifying that routine, and sometimes even writing it down, this is a routine routine I'm going to follow, and follow that for a month. See how that's working for you. What adjustments do you make, need to make? Uh, manage your risk. Uh, the other big reason that people have losses in the market is they don't utilize their stop losses properly. And, uh, and the second one is position sizing. I had a chat with a young man uh, just yesterday who who we were uh, uh, talking. Uh, he was telling me about how he had gotten all kinds of margin calls in 2022. I go, well, what were you doing? And he says, well, he goes, I didn't understand how the margin worked with uh, the, the Thinkorswim account and, and all this kind of stuff. And so, you know, part of the lessons learned, if you don't understand how margin works, don't use it. That's one. Two, he was not utilizing proper position sizing and he wasn't using stop losses. And so uh, 
it took him about six months to clear up all of his margin calls. And so if you've ever had a margin call and uh, just amplify that to, you know, to if it took him six months to clear up those margin calls, you know that he had some pretty heavy margin going on. Last but not least, learn from your mistakes. And this is where the journaling comes in. You know, analyze your trades, identify your patterns and areas for improvement, and then focus on one of those improvements per uh, per per month, per week, uh, and be able to, to grow. You know, grow to become a more a better trader, but a more consistent master trader. So that's our trading tips for this week. Now you're ready to look at some stocks. Anil, are you ready to share your stock with us? Yeah, why don't we go for it? Uh, by the way, before we go, can you just uh, go back to your previous slide on? I can. Yeah, uh, the, these are all excellent for consistency. And one thing I wanted to point it out, number two, that's where we are focusing on the Delaware focus list. Uh, we are also including not only the current situation, but I've been studying backtesting for last six months or so. Right. Uh, just about concluded the study and we'll talk about it. Yeah. And and um, I know that, you know, I, I we've got you on slate to talk at one of these noon sessions or 11 o'clock sessions about. Yeah. Neuro associative conditioning and uh, how that works into that also. And yep. so I can never remember that. that term. I just call it just call it I just call it mindset. <laughs> Call it neck, N-A-C. Neck. There you go. Okay, cool. There we go. Let's get over to Anil's stock of the the week. And I like this stock actually. Yeah, this is Meta. So Facebook. So it's the old Facebook. And so how 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 are you gonna trade this? Uh, basically, uh, this is what we are finding out in my recent study. We got a triple screen signal on it. If we look at the conventional fundamentals, the comp rating is not high. Right. Uh, but the accumulation distribution rating and up down volume ratio is pretty high. And we are picking it up repeatedly with the weekly signals. Okay. Uh, stocks like this. So uh, it really looks good. And if you look at on MarketSmith, even it has the blue dot on it, which means uh, accumulation in base. Looks good so far. Okay. You know, one of the things, and one of the things you and I need to chat about in going in, in the very near future, I'm very, would be very much interested in knowing that, okay, you get your signal, okay, and you get something that appears on your triple screen system. Then what, once it appears on that, that kind of gives you a green light to buy that stock. Then what are, what's your process to ensure that you're getting in for high probability uh, on high probability entry points. That's a, you know something I, that I would love to chat with you. Sure, about. we can do that. And so, okay, well, that's Anil's stock of the, the week. And now here's mine. Now, some of you may love this company. Some of you may hate this company. One thing we can agree on, they make ugly shoes. No, <laughs> <laughs> But they're so ugly that they're cute. Um, okay, uh, Crocs. Where am I interested in buying Crocs? So that's part of the question. Uh, we've had a I've had a momentum shift back up. It's coming off of a support level about the one ten level. It's up about what well, looks to be about ten bucks above that right now. So it is up from this low about almost ten percent, almost ten percent. So how do I want to trade this? Well. I'll be looking for this to run all the way across over here to the uh, the uptrend line. And if you look at it, look where it hits it on. That hits the uptrend line about the midsection of, uh, of April. Now we may take off from here, but this is one of those where I could just float an order down here to about 111 and just maintain that. Now, if it breaks out from here, then I would have to readjust things. But I like Crocs. Croc has an up-down ratio of 1.8, which is uh, 
you know, kind of on the high side, it, 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 it does a lot of movement, which is good. Comp rating 99, RS 98, and a uh, accumulation distribution right now of a B minus. That's a little bit lower than I what I'd like to see. But again, I think, I think this is a, a great looking stock. Um, just and, and what has taken place, we're getting a little bit of consolidation. And I wanted to highlight this to everybody from the uh, weekly charts is we get a roof up, pull back and drive over and uh, drive over and consolidate here. We get a move up and we're getting that same type of consolidation. It may drive all the way over to the uptrend line and then bounce from there. And so that's what we're looking for. And that's why we have these patterns so that the patterns can repeat themselves and take off from there. And where is it likely to go? Back here, about 177. And then we'll have to uh, recycle at that point. You had already told me, you gave me the news on this one, Anil, that, that the triple screen is pretty favorable on this one. Yeah, actually what happened, and I'm studying this thing more and more, the weekly signal actually came on August of 22nd, 2022. Okay. And it has still not gone away. And uh, what really happened on, if I look back the data on August 22nd, at that time, the comp rating was only 77. But at that time, on that day, the accumulation distribution was B plus, up down volume 1.4 and SMR rating of A. And this is a pattern that I'm picking up. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so your signal came about right there. Yep. Excellent. So you've gotten your initial move out of the way. Yep. And then uh, so, yeah, learning when, how and when to take those the, 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 the positions is, is you know, uh, can really help you. I mean, it makes it it makes a difference. I mean, you could have got in anywhere in here and you would have been able to stay on that ride there. Right. Uh, but this here was probably about a 11 percent move. And so, you know, 11 percent that can make up make a make a difference over a period of time. Yep, so, I love it. So, okay, that's that's our stocks for today, guys. We're glad you're, everybody joined. So let's go ahead and wrap things up. This weekend on March 19th, I am releasing a uh, training session that's going to be my precision entry points. It basically is identifying three, three strong high probability strategic trading signals that the professional traders don't want you to know about and don't want you to know how to use. So maximize your profits. Uh, with these three strategic signals that can improve your results and save you time. Because if you know what you're looking for sp sp specifically, it saves you time in the looking. So that will be going out as an email, letting you know when this is this uh, uh, tutorial is ready. Stop guessing and be certain about where to take action. I'm really excited about getting this one out. This is one of the first mini courses that I'll, I'll be sending out. And um, That'll, and again, I will be sending more out after that. Uh, and then, Anil, what's this about? Yeah, some exciting thing here on March 22nd. Mr. Dennis Wilborn is talking to the Delaware IBD Meetup Group. Market Mastery Unlocked. And I announced it uh, two days ago, and we have about already 60 people signed up. Oh, wow. And, so, uh, well, I, better, I guess I better come through then. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I'm I'm looking forward to chatting with your group, uh, and I I will also uh, uh, when I send out this video, I'm looking forward to doing this uh, with you guys, and uh, I'll be sharing uh, some really good really good stuff uh, about how to work towards consistency on your trading. So 2023 continues to be a year of breakthrough and consistent trading success. It's so funny when I wrote that down, consistent trading success at the very end of 2022, little did I know that my studies would be taking me to the place of finding out that consistency is the num one of the major number one issue that traders struggle with. I'm kind of call it, it's my calling to kind of help people get where they can trade more consistency. So, Anil, thanks for the the your stock pick and your your discussion. Thank and, you. I enjoyed it. I always enjoy the sessions. I learn a lot. Thank you. All right, and we will see you on Wednesday. Yep. Okay. Aloha. God bless everybody.